Hey there, Nick Jutak is here. In this video, we're gonna play around with extended globbing with Bash, which could be useful to filter file patterns in the command line, depending on what you're doing. So I've got this little directory here that has a whole bunch of different text files here, and you know, maybe we can go and cat them all out. This is not using extended globbing, by the way, but we can see the contents of all of that here. And let me just go ahead and open up the file so we can actually just see how they're operating here. So yeah, this ab.txt file just has literally the words ab in there. Apple has Apple. Uh, demo is a little demo script I created with a make script command. I've done videos about that one in the past here. Yeah, extra is extra. And then we have a back file and a text file. Both of these are hello here. So yeah, when we just cut out everything in the current directory, then uh, we see that there. But um, yeah, without even using extended globbing, you can do all sorts of other little things too that are pretty interesting too. Like for example, you can do star dot back and that's gonna only list out the contents in this case of the files that have that back. You can also do the same thing with dot text here. Um, you can go even further and do something like, you know, let's see all the files that start with A. In this case, we have ab.txt as well as apple. And by the way, I'm doing all this with the cat command here, but you might use other commands like rm or whatever, you know, thing that you want to accomplish here. And there's actually other kind of interesting things you can do here without extended globbing too. For example, you can do something like question mark, question mark, dot text. And that is going to, uh, in this case, cut out or show the output of all the files that match two characters with the dot txt extension. In this case, AB is there. Notice a hello one is not there. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to do five characters in this case, because you know the word hello has five characters, then uh, yeah, that is going to match just this one here, which is pretty cool. But now, now let's say you have a different use case and maybe you want to output all the files in this directory except for the demo file. So what do you do? And that's where extended globbing comes into play here because out of the box with bash, there is no syntax to do something like that. We have to enable a certain bash feature to do that. So in this case, what we could do is run shop T dash S and then we can say ext glob. Maybe you've seen this one in the past before. And uh, yeah, in this case, it is saying command not found. Oh, because yep, I am using Z shell here and this is a bash feature. So if you're gonna be playing around with this one, you know, you need to be inside of a bash shell here. And you know, if you're running a script, it's probably already in a bash uh, shell or maybe POSIX compliance shell. But in any case, this is a bash feature. So we need to go to bash to do this stuff. Now, uh, we're not gonna repeat all the examples here, but yeah, you can start doing things that we standard did, you know, did before. None of that stuff was Z shell specific. That was all bash. Um, but yeah, in this case, let's go back and run that shop T-S and then EXT glob to enable uh, EXT glob here. Now, you know, notice that the command didn't fail here. Sorry, there's no syntax highlighting. My bash script isn't set up to do anything like that or my bash RC file. That's a basically a, a blank script. But now, now we have some new syntax available for us to do what we wanted, which is basically, you know, getting the contents of all the files in the directory except for the demo script. So we could do in this case, you know, again, this is gonna show all of them, right? Um, let's uh, change this to be, you know, this instead. So now we're gonna say, okay, let's get everything. And then this is the new syntax here, except, and then you can put a pattern here. Of course, we've been working with files here, but these aren't um, necessarily limited to files. It's whatever pattern that you want. So in this case, we're gonna say everything except demo. And notice here that uh, that whole demo script there is no longer output, which is pretty cool. And we can extend this even further. For example, maybe you don't want the Apple output either. So in this case, look, Apple is not there. And if you go back to what it was a second ago, you can see Apple is being output right there. So this is basically, you know, you separate your terms here for the patterns with a pipe, and then you can basically, you know, almost think of it as like a regex or where it's gonna, you know, do matching against there, which is pretty nice. All this stuff is documented in um, the man pages here for bash, which I do have open, you know, there's other patterns you can do as well. We're just gonna focus on the one that we saw there. But yeah, if you wanted to go and check this out, you can just, you know, run man bash, check it out. You can also go to this page here and check it out there as well. So um, now that we have this enabled, you might be thinking, well, like, how do I even know that it's enabled? And that's, yeah, good question. So you can do shop dash TS uh, by itself with no arguments. That's gonna list out all the different options that have been enabled here. You can see XT glob is turned on. If you wanna look at the opposite of that and you wanna look at the ones that are turned off, you can do dash U here and you can see all the ones that are turned off. In this case, EXT glob is not in the output of this one, but by default it would be unless you turned it on yourself just like we did here too. So you can also run dash P, which is going to list all the options in your current shell where the ones with dash S are the ones that are on, the one with dash U is what it's turned off. And uh, if you wanna turn a specific option off like for example if we go back to what we ran here you know we can turn this back off just by using dash u here and then if we go back and do the ones that are u you'll see xt glob is there you know in the middle and then also let me clear this uh we can also see 
uh, well, let's just go with dash S here. We can also see that it's not there anymore here. And then again, yeah, just to be super clear on the video here, if you try to run this command again, then it's just going to be like, yeah, it's just not going to work because dash doesn't have that feature available because we didn't turn it on. Now, okay, how did this come up? Uh, I used this, you know, pattern before in the past, but yeah, I had a, a recent use case where I was writing a bash script and I was just running shell check against a directory of scripts here. And you can do something like shell check star. And uh, yeah, you know, in this case, uh, I said, actually, this is pretty good because, you know, I didn't plan for this in the video, but it's like, it's kind of demonstrating what the problem is here. So, uh, well, actually, leave that open and maybe we can just look at it like this, whatever. It's not too important, but yeah, look at it, check it out. Shell check is being run on all the files in the directory here, but shell check doesn't really know that, uh, this text file is in a shell script or this Apple file or whatever. And yeah, let's just say that you just wanted to run shell check against that demo script in this case here. Well, of course, in this case, well, you would just do that and you're done. <laughs> but like, imagine the use case where maybe you have a directory of scripts. Let's just call it, you have 10 shell scripts and maybe you also have a couple of Python scripts there as well. And maybe they don't even have the PY extension there and shell check just doesn't know not to check them. So yeah, you can combine what we just learned by basically doing uh, this. You can say, okay, well, let's just get, you know, all the files except demo, but technically in this case, you know, I don't have things set up to be what we want here. So in this case, like, this would be something like your Python script, or maybe you have a second Python script or a third Python script. And that's basically all I had to do here. Just tell Shellcheck, you know what, do it on everything, but ignore these here. And then uh, you would be good to go and everything would work nice. Now, what is uh, pretty interesting is, you know, I had this shell check call in inside of an actual bash script. You know, I just had a script set up. It I wasn't like running it interactively on my prompt there. And I did encounter an edge case where uh, it's actually pretty interesting. So, yeah, maybe we can just play around with this on the command line and we'll see how this works here. So let's go back to this file here. We'll go to the demo script. Let me just run the script to make sure things are working. Yep, hello world. Now, imagine that you wanted to use this pattern here. Let's just stick with our cat example so we're not like destroying uh, anything on disk here. And uh, yeah, let's just say we want to cat out everything except uh, this actual literal demo script, right? We can do something like this. And you know, if we try to run this one, then yeah, it's not going to work, right? Because we need to enable um, that option just like we saw before. So we can do something like this, right? ext glob and then, uh, yeah, or actually not blog, glob. Nope, not blog again, glob. It's a hard word to spell for me because I'm so used to typing the word blog. But in any case here, we can run and it's like, wait, it's still not working, like why? Oh, well, okay, I'm dumb, I can't spell. But you know, okay, in this case, it's like, well, it's still not working, but why? Um, but in this case, yeah, seems to be an edge case. Uh, I don't think it's a bug with how anything is, it's just do how this works. like. If you're gonna be setting an option like this, it actually has to exist on its own line. It can't exist on the same line as, um, you know, another command that you might be using and and with, or maybe even uh, a semicolon there. Now, it's also kind of interesting in that, uh, you know, uh, uh, by the way, you know, I, I don't wanna focus this on the video, but I, I am switching to NeoVim and I do have something set up to format shell script. So it actually fixed it for me. Uh, but yeah, in this case, you know, if you use a semicolon, it would have um, also failed in the same way. So, you know, the formatter is even letting us know like, hey, by the way, like these things actually need to exist on separate lines. And then when you do that, then uh, yeah, things are gonna work quite nicely here. You can see that uh, this option has been working pretty good here. We can also confirm that it works too. You know, we can just do shop uh, t-s here and just take a look at, it, at the output here. And we can see that our ext glob here is enabled too and everything is good to go. So yeah, there's a couple of different options here. You know, if you're playing around in a shell script, you know, maybe you wanna have this enabled in your entire script. Yeah, just drop it into the top of the file. Your whole script will have that enabled. You're good to go. If you just need it enabled situationally, you know, just maybe for one specific command, you don't wanna have the whole entire script using it, then you can just use something like this here. And uh, this will also give you the same result here, you know, in the sense that it'll be um, enabled for this and then disabled for the rest of your script. You can feel free to do whatever you like. You might be wondering though, like why isn't this just enabled all the time with bash? And uh, there is a stack overflow post that kind of goes into the gory details of all that. I feel like this will probably a little bit out of the scope of this video, but I will link it in the description if you go and want to check it out here. But yeah, you could absolutely just put this, um, you know, this type of command here in your bash RC file and then uh, you would be good to go there if you wanted to enable that by default. I will say this though, if you had some like real crazy edge case situation where it's like you really wanted to put this on one specific line for one specific command, technically you can do it. I mean, you can always just run bash like this and then you can just pass pass in the option, ext glob like this, and then you can be like, you know, whatever 
shell script command that you want to do. Like in this case, maybe we'll just say cat demo just to demonstrate things here. I believe this should work. Um, yeah, there we go. Things are working pretty nicely here. So basically you just end up running a different process for bash here, calling in dash capital O here to pass in the option that we want. And then dash C is just whatever, you know, shell script that you want in there. So it's like, yeah, you can technically do it on one line like this if you'd like, but yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're just running a shell script, you might as well just pop it onto two lines and then uh, you are good to go here. Cool. Okay. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.